Okay. When I was a kid, I remember going to the zoo and there were elephants and they would like walk in a line holding one trunk to the tail. I don't know if they were taught to do that. I don't think they do it naturally. So they were probably taught to do it. And they would walk around like that for a little bit. Anyhow, that's only to say, that's what I think of when I think of linked lists. If not that, then I think of train cars. Train cars connect to each other. And if we wanna take one train car out, that's fine. We just close the train up without that train car there anymore. So linked lists work in largely the same way. I think of them as represented as just sort of a bubble with something in it. Almost always when you do an interview problem, that linked list has just an integer in it. The problems we're gonna to do today have integers in them. And then they point to something or nothing. Here we say this one is pointing to nothing. We could have the same one and it can point to another one. And that one might have a nine in it. And then that one could be pointing to nothing, which we call null. And we could of course have a bubble with a four that points to a bubble with an eight that points to a bubble with a one that points to nothing. Eventually you're gonna to get to nothing, right? And when we work through a problem like this, we're going to set up some kind of pointer most of the time, not all the time, but usually some kind of pointer, some kind of reference where we say, hey, we're looking at this one here and we really only have one direction we can go, which is to the next one. So we move on down to the next one. And then we say, hey, do you have something after you? Yep, you do. Okay, we move on to the next one. And we say, do you have something after you? Nope. And we say, okay, dead end, we're done here. Another thing is we almost always wanna keep some kind of reference to the beginning of the list because we don't have a good way to move backwards, at least on a singly linked list, which we're oftentimes working with. So if we decide, oh my gosh, I missed something, I need to go back to the beginning, then the easiest way to do that is not to try and move backwards back to the beginning like we might through an array, but rather just stop, go all the way back to the beginning, find our pointer and restart there. This is in, in a very small nutshell, what a linked list is doing. And the analogies I use are like train cars, nope, train cars, or like um, uh, elephants holding, how do we say this? Walking trunk to tail, tail to trunk, something like that. And I would juxtapose that with arrays, which I think of as um, garage doors. So if we have an array, then we've got a bunch of garage doors like this, where we can put something in every one. We can say, okay, here I wanna put a three, and here I wanna put nothing, and here I wanna put a seven, and here I wanna put a two. But if I take away the seven, now I just have an empty garage. I don't, I don't lose this space. It's still there in memory. Whereas with a linked list, if I take away this nine, then three just points at null. There's no, there's no empty garage there like there is with an array. Okay, so some small differences between the two that helps us understand maybe when one would be useful and the other would be useful. If we get time, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, I live in New York City where occasionally you see, you know, like little tiny garages and you see a bunch of them sometimes out in the suburbs where everybody has their own little one car garage and that's like an array. And if someone takes their car out of the garage, the garage is just there, it's just empty. And I would compare that with something like, I used to use this one array, this analogy, but I don't like it anymore. Now I'm, look, I'm suffering as a teacher without a good analogy. Um, more like, a choose your own adventure book where you say, okay, you finish this chapter, this chapter points to this other thing. And it doesn't matter if it's right next to it or 40 pages ahead or 20 pages back. It could be in any direction. It only matters that it says, here's where you go next. Okay. I don't know if that's helpful at all. Hopefully a little bit. So put our nine back here. Cool. Now let's look at one more thing. How do we set up a linked list? We say in JavaScript, at least we use a constructor. So when we write a constructor, we write a regular function, but we give it a capital letter to start out with. Then we'd say, what do we wanna pass into it? And then we set its properties. This 
dot data equals data and this dot next equals next or null. Oof, there we go. All right. Now, with that, then that kind of answers the question here. We want to send in data and next. So when we have a constructor or a class in JavaScript, we have either one. We call this a constructor. We could also write it as a class. If you're familiar with classes, then I presume you could translate this over to a class fairly easily. We invoke it by saying let node one equals new. We use the new keyword node. And then we pass in the things that are necessary and optionally things that we can. Next, we're going to consider optional here and data we're going to consider necessary. So let's mimic this linked list here. So we say, okay, the first node has a four in it and we won't set its next yet. And if I say console log node one, let me just clean up a little bit here. We run that. Okay, we see that it's given us a node object. That node has data of four inside. So that's like this four that's sitting in what I call this little bubble here. And next is pointing to null. So right now, none of this exists, at least none of this part here. So the four is just pointing directly to null. Let's create the second node. So here I'll say let node two equals new node. And this one has an eight inside of it. And again, we're not going to set anything to the next, but what we will do is we'll go back to node one and say the next is pointing to node two. And with that, I'm going to actually leave this console log and add another one here. And let's run that. So the first time the console log runs, it looks exactly the same, of course, because nothing has changed. Here's just our first node. Then we create our second node. Then we set a pointer from our first node to our second node. So by the second time it runs, we see here, the first node is containing data of four. And next it's pointing to another node that has an eight inside of it. And then it's pointing to null, but we know that doesn't copy this exactly because we still have a one. So you can probably see where this is going now, I hope so. We say, let node three equals new node. It has a one inside of it. I go there and node two dot next equals node three. Now let's do console dot log node one. I'm going to comment out these other two console logs for now. We run that and it can get a little tricky to read, but we say, okay, our first node has a four inside of it. We check up here. Yep, that's what it was. Then if we follow to next, it says next points to this node. That node has an eight inside of it, okay? That's the eight, that makes sense. Now, if we go to that node and go to its next, it points to another node that has a one inside of it. Cool. And then that next points to null. So now we've created a linked list through this code from line 19 to 38 that mimics this sketched up linked list here. So now I can give you whatever numbers I say, okay, we want four nodes that have these four values. And following this code, at least in JavaScript, you could create a linked list. A bit of a longhand way, but it's certainly possible. And linked lists are not nearly as intuitive to, to set up as arrays or objects for that matter. Um, arrays more, I think, intuitive than objects and objects more intuitive than nodes in a linked list. Most of the time when you get a linked list question as an interview question, it will only have a node class. It won't have a linked list class or a linked list constructor, though sometimes it will. And you'll just have to do some more studying outside of this time to, to get comfortable with that. We won't be able to do that today. All right, let's do one more thing here before we start the first problem. Let's say, what if we want to write a loop to go over this linked list here? Well, we know in our case that this link has three nodes. So let's say let i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. And at each one of these, let's say console.log, now this will be a little bit tricky here. How are we gonna do this? 
eval node plus i plus one. Oof. This is not good code. We're going to improve this in just a second. But I think one, two, one, two. I think this will work. Let's give it a try. It will not work. Uh, missing one of these closing parentheses. Let's try that again. Cool. It's working. It's printing it out. Let's get rid of this to clear this up a little bit. And let's say we want to print out this node, but we want to find the data. Oof, man, this is some gnarly code right there. Node undefined. Okay, let me try one more thing. How about that? Nope. It gets undefined, undefined, undefined. Try again. So that works. We see this is the first node pointing to two more. This is the second node. This is the third node. But usually when we're working with, with a linked list, we don't want to write a for, uh, for of loop or a for loop at all. We want to do a while loop. We're going to change that and do that now. While node console.log node.data and then node equals node.next. When, when we start an array, anywhere we are in array, we can always find the length, right? Because we can just go array.length. But in a linked list, we can't do linked list.length. We usually do not have that option, especially in the way most interview questions are formatted. So we're going to say let uh, actually, let's call this head equals node one. So that's the beginning of our linked list. Here we'll say, uh, I take it back. I'm just going to call that node. I already named it down here. Might as well keep it. While there's any node at all, go ahead and print out the data associated with it. Then take that variable node and move it to the next node. So back to our example here. Let's bring this down. This pointer is the variable node. So we said, take this, call that node. Take this node and point it at node one. Then we say, is there any node there? Yeah, there is. There's a whole object there. Great, that's true then. Okay, print out the data associated with that node. That would be a four that we'll print out. Then take that node and move it to node.next. Well, node.next is gonna move it right on down here to this eight. Then the while loop asks again, is there a node there? Yeah, there is. There's a whole, again, whole object with data inside of it. All right, great. Go ahead and print out that data associated with it. That's going to be an eight. And then take that node variable and move it on down to whatever comes next. And then right back up here, is there a node there? Yep, still a node there. And it's going to print out a one. Okay, move it on down to whatever comes next. Our constructor says that if nothing is provided as next, then this dot next is null. So now it moves to null and while null is not true. So now null is false and we're gonna end up down here. And let's just put console.log, no more nodes. And let's go ahead and run that. Great, four, eight, one, no more nodes. So you can call this node. A lot of times I like to call this pointer. Seems like it matches what it's doing to me. That's the case. We just change all of these to pointer and do the exact same thing. Go ahead and print out the data of each one and then says, hey, no more nodes. We got to the end. So I like to give this no matter, I don't know. Some of you, I think, probably have some experience with this, maybe some none. Hopefully, this lays a little bit of groundwork in the limited time we have. I'd love to take any questions about this if anyone has them. Nothing, good. Okay, hope that's a good thing. Let's move on to this problem then. This is the first problem. I'm gonna put the link in the chat here. This is the first problem on the linked list set here under the data structures problem sets. And I've put the link there in the chat. Let's go through this. Okay, this problem has two parts. First, it says in, implement length to count the number of nodes in a linked list. 
So we just saw how to iterate over a linked list. All we need to do in order to do this is just keep a count as we go so that down here, we don't say no more nodes, but rather we say what the length, how many nodes were in the linked list. So that's the first part. The second part is implement count to count the occurrences of an integer in the linked list. So how many times does a specific integer show up as the data? So here, they, I like to wrap each of these in parentheses, right? Because I think it shows a little more like this is an encapsulated thing. They just represent theirs like this. Here's the linked list with one and then two and then three. And they say, how many times does one show up in this linked list? Well, it shows up one time. So we see that as the answer. And then here we're targeting two. So as we go through each node, we want to count how many times does two show up? No, no, no. Yes, that's one. Yes, that's two. Yes, that's three. Yes, that's four. No, no, done. Okay, four is the answer there. And I think it's a little bit confusing how they have these sorted with all ones and then all twos and all threes. There's nothing that says they have to be sorted or that there will be any of a given number or none of a given number. I just don't want you to get confused with sort of arrays where there's indices. There's no in, there's no such thing as an index in a linked list. We can't say, oh yeah, it's at the first index. Nope, that's an array concept. It does not pertain to linked lists. There is no arrays when it comes, or no, no indices. And again, it kind of goes back to those garage doors for me where a garage door is there no matter what. So we can say, oh yeah, you're garage number three, right? And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm garage number three. But if you had a train, you wouldn't say like, oh yeah, you're the third car in the train. No, because sometimes I'm the third car and sometimes I'm the 12th car and sometimes I'm the caboose and sometimes I'm toward the back and sometimes there's only two cars. That's more like a linked list where if you leave your spot, you lose your spot. That, that train's gonna close up and you're no longer the third car and there's no space holding there for you. Hopefully that helps That helps me a little bit understand conceptually why in the heck beyond what, like, I, okay, maybe I have to learn this for an interview, but why would I ever care about this as a concept? Because it's fundamentally different than what an array does. Okay, let's get started with this problem. Um, mine so small, don't know why. Okay, I'll make it a little bit bigger like that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna leave these tests the way they are. This is another thing about linked lists is it's much more time consuming to write good tests for them. Not that it's not worth it, just that it takes a lot longer. You can see how long it takes to write even a short linked list when you're following something like this. So it takes some real time to write up automated tests, but they've got some good tests for us here. Here where you're finding the length in the first part. They say, okay, imagine the length list is null, meaning there's no nodes whatsoever. You should return zero. Imagine there's only one node. And remember, this looks exactly like what we did. Only I think I started with a four here and they're starting with 99, one new node. It should be a length of one, similar to our example up here. If there's only one node, of course, that would be a length of one. Then here, they've got a function here, build one, two, three. I think in the description, it explains to us that this builds one linked list with three nodes and just does that automatically. And so that is then an answer of three. So let's work on that first. Talk about how we go through this. We're just gonna follow the same example. We're gonna say let pointer equals head. Then we're not gonna try and do a for of loop or for in or for with an I or normal five. A normal for loop, we're gonna say while there's anything at the pointer, then go ahead and we need a variable called length. And this is not gonna work. Um, they shouldn't have called this function length. They should have called it get length or find length so that we could use this as our variable. Now we have to think of something else that's gonna be less optimal. Can you call it counter? What is it? Counter. Yeah, we could. It's not, no, let's call it something more specific. Counter is very generic. It doesn't tell us what we're counting. We want something that's as specific as possible. We'll call this length of linked list equals zero. I, um, I'm always, your, your code should be expressive such that someone could read it. And even especially specifically an engineer, but even a non-engineer, we hope to pick out names that, that really uh, well explain what we're doing. Okay, so we can go ahead and add to this. If there's a pointer here, that means we can add one here, plus equals 
one. And then we'll move that pointer up. So pointer equals pointer dot next. The code on this side will always evaluate first. So pointer dot next is first going to evaluate to whatever it is, either null or the next node. And then pointer will be assigned to that value there. So we don't have any risk that these two things are sort of out of sync. And then when we're done with this, the while loop will say, oh, yep, we hit null. So that means we're done. Then we just need to return length of linked list. Um, again, I, I highly encourage you to practice using variable names like this. I know it's easy to get in the habit of like, oh, I just got to solve this problem. When you get into an interview, your interviewer is going to want to see that you can write highly readable code. And choosing something like solve for SOL for solution or solution or total or counter, total what? Counter of what, right? What I, what I would choose to do here is find length of linked list. And then I think it would be okay to just call this length because in the context of the function name, this will never be separated from the, from the function name. In the context of the function name, now this is very clear what it is, but we can't rename this function here because um, it's code wars. So we're stuck with length. So then it's up to me to try and compensate a little bit in order to do good practicing, help myself be a better developer and say, hey, I'm gonna call this length of linked list and do it just like that. Are there questions about this code before we test it? Okay, notice I'm not working right off the head because I wanna be in the habit of keeping reference to head. Like I said, I always wanna be able to go back to the beginning of a linked list. Partially, I want I want to do that in the problem, but I don't wanna set myself up with a, a problem approach that would make me lose that. Because if I ever, or like if I'm in the middle of an interview, I don't want to have to rework everything in order to get back to the head. I want to always have that as available as an option. I'm going to comment out these tests here, just so we test the first part only first. And I'm going to run my tests. And there we go. We've got it working just fine. Let's do a console log here to see pointer and length of linked lists. So we can see as each one goes. Okay, so for the first one, there's just an empty line here, there's or whatever. There's nothing here because again, there's no node. So this while loop never runs. We just say pointer equals head, which is null. Okay, the link list length is zero. While null, nope, not gonna run. And then here, it's just gonna return a zero. Then we get to the next one that has one node. So again, the same thing happens. Now it does have something. So it runs, here is our node and here is the length right there. And then it moves on to null and we're done. And then the next one starts here. And we said it builds one, two, three. So it has a data of one and then two and then three. And incidentally, it has a count of one and two and three. So I see here's my first node and here's the count so far. That node we can see next is pointing to data is two. Here that one shows up and that now our count is two. That one points to this node, which is three, which shows up here. And with that one, the count is three. That one points to null, so we're done, and our length is three. Okay, let's move on to this count. Okay, and we'll do some of the exact same things. First, we'll set our pointer. Let pointer equals head. Then we're gonna need, again, of course, I don't like this, Function name, not nearly descriptive enough and do doesn't allow us to use count now. So let's pick something pretty descriptive. We'll say um, appearances of data. I'll call it count of data. Yeah, I don't love it, but we'll move on. Okay, mostly we're doing the same thing here. While pointer. Now we don't just want to count it no matter what. We want to add a if statement. If pointer dot data equals data, then we'll take count of data plus equals one. And finally, we return count of data. Clean up here a bit. Let me 
bring that so we can see all of it. Great. So we still want to go uh, node by node. But we're counting selectively now, only if the data inside of that node is equal to the data here passed in, then we will increment our count. And finally, when we finish the whole linked list, we'll return our count. Questions here? OK, we have all of these tests passing, so we'll leave those there. Let's bring these tests in. So let's check what it's looking for. First, it builds a list off this same function here. So it's three nodes, one, two, three. It checks for one and expects one. It checks for two and expects one. It checks for three and expects one. It checks for 99 and expects zero. And then it checks for one in a null link list and it expects zero. So we will run that. It's taking a long time. Did I make a mistake? I don't think so. Oh, what's the matter here? Did I not move? Oh, I didn't move it up. I'm looking at the other one. Pointer, my bad here. Pointer equals pointer dot next. Hopefully you guys caught that on yours. Let's go again. This should contain only one expected not a number to equal one. What? What's the problem here? Chain one, one, okay. Pointer equals head, count of data, ah, my bad here. This needs to be set to zero. I don't know why I, I omitted that, my, my fault. Should have set it to zero to start. In the case where it doesn't ever get incremented, it's um, a problem and doing plus equals one to something that's undefined won't work. That was my bad, two mistakes there. Let me show that code so everybody can see. Okay, any questions about this? Hopefully this is a good intro before we move on to probably get to one more problem, maybe two. Thank you, are you following this? I'm following. Good, great. All right, let's submit our answer. Make sure we've got everything correct. And good, that's pass, that's that's I think eight points if you haven't done this before. And we'll move on to the submission. Okay. Um, you'll notice, of course, I don't write code like this. Not because I think it's bad, but because I think you should have very, I would say this, like um, easy to read code for an interview. Should be able to be fast, but also be very readable. It's a trade off. I always have to go back and forth. When I'm teaching, I try to be very, very readable and not, not compress things too much. Here's pretty much what we had, right? We don't need this not equal to null. That's implied here. Anyways, kind of the same, same approach as what we did. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Back to code track. I'm gonna go to this second one here. Push and build one, two, three. And there it is in the chat. All right. Push and build one, two, three. Write push and build one, two, three functions to easily update and initialize linked lists. Try to use the push function within your build one, two, three function. Here's an example of push usage. So. It starts out with this variable chain set to null. Then it says chain equals push and push takes in chained. So again, that's null and a three. And we see down here, what that does is it creates a node with three in it and that's pointing to null. Okay, so we're, we're building the list, not from the front to the back, like I did when I was showing it, but from the back to the front where the back is always null and before that, we have a three, and before that, we have a two, and before that, we have one, and before that, we have an eight. And we see, why is that? Because we push a three, and then push a two, and then push a one. Here's something I think is confusing about this. If you're familiar with arrays, then of course, you know, in JavaScript, we have array.push, which adds something to the end of the array. 
This is not array.push. This is just some function called push that they're asking us to write. So it has the same name kind of as array.push, but it does something very different. So we just have to be, be sure that we're not thinking of them as somehow the same or connected together. And it tells us the push function accepts head, head of the linked list, and data parameters, where head is either a node object or null, none or nil. Your push implementation should be able to create a new linked list node when head is null, none, nil. The build123 function should create and return a linked list with three nodes, one, two, three, and null. So let's get into it. This is another two-part one. Looks like I already have some code here. I got to reset that. There we go. OK. So let's think about this just for a second back here. It's telling me if I have null and I write this function push and I pass in a three, but first actually comes null, then what this should return is a node with three pointing to null. OK, then I think, well, how do I create this? Well, I did that before or something just like it. I did it like this, right? I said, create a new node with three in it. And then if I console log this, this will be a node of three with next as null. So this is our first clue as to how to build this function, where we said, hey, when we called a new node and we passed in just the data, this is what it returned. So let's do that. Go up here. Let me, okay, let me clean up here. I don't want a lot of things open. All right, good. So here we can say, if there's no head, then all I want to do is return new node with data. And you know that I'm really huge on one thing at a time, right? I can go ahead and check, assume first that there's null being passed in here and do this. So let's open up our tests and see if they make that same assumption. First, I'm going to comment all these out. They do, in fact, make that assumption. So first they pass in null and one. And what we should be returning is when we call data on our return value, we get a one. So when this runs, it's going to create a new node. It's going to create a new node with the data in it. And that will be a one here. And it's going to set it pointing to null. So when it calls dot data here, it should see a one. So let's make that a comment so we can just show what we're doing. And one more thing, I'm going to comment out all of these tests since they go for the second part of the problem. This is how I make sure that I just isolate one test at a time in proper order. The tests here are pretty good, so we're just going to go with those. We click on test, and hey, we're passing that test. That's great. Next, we'll bring the next test. Now this test also passes in null and also passes in one. So it's returning the same thing. Then what does it do? It calls next on it and it gets null. Well, if I'm right in my logic, then calling next on our node should indeed return null and we should pass this test. Let's go ahead and run that. And we pass it, which is great. Okay, go to the next test. This test does not pass in null. It passes in an actual node and it says, when we call dot data here, we should get a two. So now we have to write some other code here. We say, if no head, meaning if this is null, then that is the case that we just solved for. I'm not gonna worry too much about optimizing it. Otherwise, there is a head. And now I wanna say, return new node that has this data here, that's good. And mm, I think I'm just gonna change this function here to be more like the way I like it, which is next or null. And then here I'm going to provide next, which is head. So if this is provided to us and we can edit it, we can do that exactly. In a second, I'll show how we can do without that. Okay, now when this is sent in, this should become the next value here, and we should get a node that holds a two. So let's run that test, and we've got it. Great. Let's go to our next test. Now, this is saying that if we go to next.data, 
let me fix this up here. Here we're saying we've got a node of two, that is pointing to a node of one, and that is pointing to null. So if we go to the return value of push dot next, so here's the return value, here's next dot data, that's what's inside, we should get a one. We're gonna run that. And we've got that working. Now we've got a solution. Okay, what do you say? Well, what? how did you just change that? Well, first of all, the code's here. I can change it if I want to. So can you. But if you don't, you say, I don't want to change that code. I just want to write the solution this way. No problem. What we can do is we'll say, let current head equals new node. Now we don't have any option to pass something in here. Then I'll say current head dot next equals head and now I'll return current head okay let me clean up a bit where am I at here there we go there we go there we go okay and let's give it a try again to make sure that works just as well yep that works too if we take this approach these two lines are so similar that we're going to go ahead and merge them so Let's just drop all of this completely. And here we say, we're gonna create a current head no matter what. And then we're gonna say, if head, well, I a little bit, then come on, it's not playing with me. Okay, there we go. And get rid of this. Oh, I see. I've got a little mistake there. There we go. So we create a new current head and we go ahead and set the data in that. And then we say, if there was already an, a, a previous head, we want to make sure that becomes the, the next of our current head. So if head exists, then take current head dot next and set that equal to head. And then we'll go ahead and return the current head. You notice I don't stay here new head. I don't ever start my variable names with new because new is a reserved keyword and it looks too much like that. That means something very different than I'm trying to mean with this. So I'll say usually current head or something like that. Um, great. Let's go ahead and run that. Cool. Now we've got a nice succinct solution here. Easy to read, easy to follow without changing this code here, though I don't think there's anything wrong with changing this code here. But if you couldn't, if the interviewer said like, oh, no, 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 you can't change that. You have to do it here. Okay, well, here's how to do it here. Questions about that? I had to learn linked lists like 12 or 15 times before it made much sense to me. So I'll be honored if I can be, hopefully it doesn't take you that long. If it takes you as long as it takes me, I'll be honored to be one of your 12 or 15 times that you have to learn it. and. Hopefully you can find some other people to teach it and everybody teaches it a little bit different and somebody will do something that resonates and also your brain after repeated exposure will start to see patterns and meaning where before it looked meaningless. So both of those things can happen. I am but one, one teacher on the way. Okay, so now we need to do kind of the same thing except for we need to build three. So our link list needs to look like what is it? Three, two, one. Build one, two, three. Okay. So it needs to look like a node of one and then a node of two and then a node of three and then null. Now, a couple of ways we can do this. One thing is we built this exactly right in our little warm up here. I just built it with these numbers, four, eight, one. But what if I just copy this code like so and I bring it over here? And I paste it in and I said, okay, this is going to be the first node in my, whoops, in my implementation. So that's going to be a one. And this is going to be the second node. So that's going to be a two. And this is going to be the third node. And that's going to be a three. And now I don't need, I need to return it. Yeah, that's all. Return node one. We're not going to stay here. We're not going to leave it like this, but I just want to show how these things cross over. We don't need the console log. Let's just clean up a little bit. Okay. Let's separate this out like this. Okay, good. So here's our first node. 
Then we create, that's, that's this part of it here. Then we create our second node, but it's not yet attached. We attach it through the next property. Here's our third node, right? But it's not yet attached and we attach it here. And then we return node one, since we wanna return the, the head of our newly created list. With that, let's go ahead, oh, all the tests are already uncommented. Let's go ahead and run that. Um, that's my bad. Can't leave that uncommented. Try again. Also, um, on the first sample test. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. We added an extra letter on describe. Oh, thank you. My bad there. Thanks so much. Good. And we say, okay, that passes. So exactly what we did learned in the mini lecture that can be done. However, it's pretty much implied they want us to use this push function. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to delete everything here. Uh, yeah, I'll just delete it. You can go back and watch the video if you find it that interesting. Or copy from the replit. And let's think about now, how do we do this? If we want to build this list using push, we pretty much have to start from the back and work forward. So let's say let head equals null, meaning we're starting right here with nothing at all. Then we say head equals push with head and the last, the, the again, we're working back to front, right? So head and three, okay? And then we just keep going on this pattern. And we say next comes head, my bad, head equals push head and two. One more step, head equals push head and one. And now we're done, return head. So we follow this one back, we say, okay, head is holding one and it's pointing to the previous head. Well, that head is holding two and it's pointing to the previous head. Well, that whole head is holding three and it's pointing to the previous head and that head was null. So here we're kind of, doing the opposite of what I did with pointer. I said, don't lose reference to head. Well, this is kind of the same application of that principle because we're adding to the front of it, we're constantly moving head. What I don't want you to do is move head back through it. But if you are adding to the beginning of the linked list, make sure you move head. We don't want head to be pointing here when that's actually not the head of the linked list or here or here. And let's go ahead and test that. And boom, we've got it. And with that, I think we've got our solution. Let me show that code here for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that that will do it for these two problems. Questions here. So the second portion of the build one, two, three function, mm -hmm. that's sort of like a hard coding, get exactly these elements, but wouldn't you want to use like a generator or something for a true linked list where you might have data flowing into it? Depends a little bit, right? If you were writing some tests, you probably would want something fairly rigid like this. So you could know exactly what's there to make sure you test against it properly. And that's kind of what they're walking us through here. They, in our first problem they gave us, they provided this one in the background already built. And now I think they're kind of saying like, hey, we want you to know how to write this yourself so that if you want to write your own tests moving forward, you can do something like this. Maybe you want five or three or every, you know, one, three, five, whatever. Um, in a real world application, maybe you would either want to read from an API to build out your linked list, which would be great. Maybe you want to um, generate data randomly, be fine. Um, yeah, I would say like, I think your inclination there is, is, is good and right. And here, because it's bending towards how we're going to use this in tests, that's why they use very rigid data. Also, I don't think they want to introduce too many concepts at a time. I'm not sure if that's a good answer. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, I, I'm i just, I'm new to linked lists. So I'm trying to understand where they're going to come into play and what kind of information is going to flow through them. Yeah, so let's talk about that next. So let's make sure this is all passing and then we'll finish up the last few minutes talking about that. So that looks good and we'll go ahead and submit that. Okay, again, I love these kind of things. They're kind of fun. They're interesting to look at. They're interesting to study on, but I really want you to write. Um, this is cool too. It's interesting, nothing wrong with it. 
uh, let's see if we can find like this is not that cool push 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 don't do this doesn't look doesn't look good i'd rather put it on every single line here's what we did something just like this pretty much um I, you know I, I encourage you to write like find the most readable solutions and then make sure you can write code like that and then once like this is so much why once you can write really readable code is this mine? Nope. This looks like mine though. Something like this. Once you can write really readable, this is really readable to me. I think I wrote my solution a lot like this. And then move on to things that are a little more like, you know, this or this. Um, but I, anyway, I don't stress yourself out if you can't write a reducer to make a link list or something like that. It's it's not worth it. It's not worth stressing yourself out over it. It's cool. It's, it's a cool thing to see. If you can write this interview, that's great. But the most thing is, can you write fluidly, clearly in a way that you can speak about it, explain to the interviewer what you're doing, and the interviewer can easily read it. And if the interviewer were to take your code to a colleague after that couldn't make the interview for some reason and say, hey, look, this is the code that they wrote. They're not like, eh, like that. They're just like, oh, yeah, OK, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. I see. Makes, yeah, that, that's, again, why I choose descriptive variable names for the most part. And I usually, even like with, like with this, I put pretty much everything on its own line. I, th I think I put an empty line between all of them. I just, it's like, space doesn't cost you anything. Try and make it readable. All right. Let's take the last few minutes then and talk about where we might use linked lists. So I think one place where I see them being used is imagine you have some curriculum. And, you know, you have chapter one and you have chapter two and you have chapter three. And then you realize that actually students get lost between chapter two and chapter three. So if these operate kind of like a linked list, you say, oh, you know what? Chapter two points to chapter three and chapter three points to the end or null, right? What I wanna do is I wanna insert something here and let's, uh, numbers are, are kind of bad. Let's say we'll just call them how and why and where. And let's say we want, I'm just choosing some names to represent a little bit of a conceptual thing here to show that they're not like indices. So how points to why and why points to where and where points to null. And then your boss comes and says, you know what? We really need what in there. So I need you to go back and put what in. When you think in an array, you're like, okay, so what I would have to do literally inside the computer, what needs to happen is I need to go to the garage where Y is. I need to back out the car and I need to put in the garage where where is. Okay, well, before I can do that, I got to back out where, and then I got to build a new garage in memory, which really is probably going to mean I got to move everything in memory. But I say, okay, I move where into a new garage and then I move Y over into where's old garage. And then I can put what in the old garage. But with the linked list, it's pretty easy. We just say, okay, Y actually is going to point to what and what is going to point to where, and where is still pointing to null. So we just shift, so to speak, but things don't literally have to shift. They just reference each other. They just point at each other. They're not literally like an array right next to each other. So that would be one, one place. Um, I actually, I think like if you were writing software to manage trains, train cars, I think I'm sure there's software for that, right? What cars come off? Where do they get inserted in the next train? What, where do cars get inserted in the current train? That's totally like a linked list problem. You, you probably don't want to represent that as a race. You want to represent that as linked list where you just say, okay, I have car A and car A right behind it has car T and car T behind it has car Z and car Z points to car BB, et cetera. And you say at the next stop, I want you to remove car Z, okay? So at the next stop, we just go ahead and take off car Z, like so. This one, by the way, is pointing to null. And now car Z is just pointing to null. And the train goes on. This looks like a cart. It's not a very good way to represent these things. B, e, there we go and R Z. So I think I've never 
use linked lists in like any kind of practical work. I'm trying to think if I have, I've written a little bit of curriculum where I manage my curriculum with linked lists. That's, I think it personally, but I'd say they come up in 10% of interviews. And if you do find an application for them and you want to show that off, that will be highly, uh, I think it'll be pretty impressive to somebody. Um, there's a reason I put them so far back. I think it's great Go over them tonight. We haven't done this before in this class, but I tell again, all my students that I work with even more, I said, I would rather have you cut through all of these problems, like a knife through hot knife through butter and not be able to do link lists at all. Then have you do this pretty well and stutter when you go through these problems. And I obviously don't mean like literally stutter. I just mean like, well, I think maybe I tried that. I did, that maybe that's uh, it's like these type of problems are a, what a lot of companies give for entry level interviews. Maybe not like fang companies, but a lot of companies are going to give you a problem a lot like these here. And you'd be better off probably doing these five times each before you spend too much time banging your head against these. So that's all I would say about that. I think it's great to know link lists, but many companies are not going to use link lists as an interview question. So, I mean, you might lose some interviews, but you'll definitely lose. You'll lose 90% of interviews if you can't do these problems smoothly, cleanly, quickly, relatively quickly at least, um, writing nice, readable code. And you'll lose very few interviews over these because not that many companies give them in interviews. 